So let's first talk a little bit about what are some of the ways, what are some of the things that you have done, and Edward, I'll, I'll let you share first, to really try to find that balance and walk that line between the certainty that you want in life because it does bring us comfort and the true realities of life, and that's the uncertainty that that happens. Well, I think, you know, when you're navigating life's uncertainties, you have to figure out where you are in life. And, and that means how you define life. Um, are, you, are you a part of your environment? Are you uh, separate from it? Because um, that's going to determine how you perceive it and receive it. Um, so I like how that ties into our topic of finding who you are, because, you know, if you find yourself a part of your environment, um, you may, you know, receive um, these changes that are going to come as an attack on you as uh, yourself and your person. But if you understand who you really are, you know that these things are going to come and they're going to go and you're, you know, just in the background observing, you know, these things and don't have to take them personally. Um, take them as the opportunity that they are and, and learn how to walk through them um, in, in grace and in love. And you're, um, that's the best way to manage. And that's how I manage mine on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. You know, that's, that's a good point. So, but if someone comes to you, for example, and they say, you know, I'm really struggling, what advice do you hand off to them? What would, because obviously that's what's working for you. How would you frame that to, to, for someone who's like really struggling to get their head around that? I always tell people to start with this calming their mind, find calm, find calm. It, you know, it, the, the topic is about, you know, finding purpose in the chaos. You, you have to figure out ways. I always start with mindfulness and sometimes that's really hard for people to get their heads around, but I tell them simply, it, all that means is quiet, quiet, find ways, find spaces, turn the radio off, turn the TV off, you know, spend longer times in the shower, you know, find ways um, to practice just getting away and unplugging. Um, and that's how you, uh, I tell everyone to start, you know, dealing with that chaos and those uncertainties, because when you have that space, yeah, you can actually think, but when you're in the whirlwind, thinking is very hard. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Erica, what about you? What What's your take on trying to just find a balance between, you know, the certainty we want because it's comfortable and the, the reality of the uncertainties of life? I agree with him. Uh, really just trying to calm yourself. Uh, one of the things that I've had to remind myself recently is that not everybody's going to be happy that you're so sparky right? <laughs> that you have thus yes. far. Yes. And yes. so yes. when you find yourself um, kind of questioning or or feeling a little bit sluggish, uh, more sluggish than your usual sparky self, a part of what you might need to do is to look around and see what the environment is and what's changed about your environment that's causing the drain or causing mm -hmm. you, you to feel that the energy is really blowing away from you and not in a, a positive way. Um, mm -hmm. But that's one of the things that I personally have had to kind of reassess myself, uh, my surroundings. And if there is something or someone I've allowed into my space that has uh, impacted me in such a way that I don't feel my normal sparky self, <laughs> So a part of igniting or keeping, you know, your sparkiness, I think, is to to stop when when you, and evaluate your surroundings when you feel like something within you has changed. Because maybe it's your spirit telling you or warning you about something that's for your good. And I think when mm -hmm. we uh, too many times we ignore ignore that feeling inside. Maybe we try to just stay busy or focus on something else or, but it's all, but your spirit is telling you to be alert. And um, I think by ignoring that, lots of times we negatively impact our own mental health because we're not listening to ourselves. So part of igniting our spark and maintaining that spark really is to listen to what's inside. Hmm. Because lots of times we're telling ourselves, we're giving ourselves warnings and a part of ourselves just doesn't want to listen. 
Yeah, very true. So uh, self-talk is a, is a very important piece of it. And, and, and what that dialogue is really, really matters as to what you're telling yourself. And because it becomes habitual to you, you know, when you're, if you're telling yourself that this is a negative thing or this is a negative space, that starts to erode and eat away at, as you said, your spark. Right. Mm -hmm. So figuring out maybe what it is that that self-talk is and it's that little person on your shoulder that's, you know, whispering in your ear all day. Uh, really getting a grip on that because that could really be what, what the challenge is. So sometimes it's outside things, but what's really going in is your own perception of those things and then how you then feed it to yourself. So that's also a very important piece of it that you have to watch out for.